Hello, my name's Alistair Chapman and I'm the designer of this, the Genus Hurricane 3D rig. Now I've been shooting 3D for about seven years now, so for me 3D is something that I know I understand very well. But I know that many people that are considering embarking on their first 3D production or getting into 3D um, find this a very difficult thing to grasp perhaps. Maybe they're actually quite afraid of it because it is technically more challenging than shooting in 2D. So I've prepared this series of videos to help those of you that are looking to do your first 3D production or would simply like to know more about how you shoot 3D video. Now before we go into how we shoot 3D video, I think it's very important to look at how we as human beings see the world in depth, how we create this three-dimensional image of the world that we see in our brains. Now it's important to note that because our eyes uh, and this distance between the centers of our eyes is called the interocular, are only about 65 millimeters or two and a half inches apart typically, we don't actually see things stereoscopically that are more than about 35, 40 meters away. So when you're looking at a distant mountain range, you're not actually seeing it stereoscopically as such. Yes, you do have two different viewpoints of those mountains, but because those viewpoints are so similar, the mountains themselves in the distance won't have any uh, 3D depth gained by your stereoscopic vision, your stereopsis, this is called the fact that you have two different viewpoints. But I can hear you all saying, but well, hang on a minute, I know how far away mountains, I can look at mountains in the distance and they look three dimensional to me, what's going on? Well, what's happening is that as well as our two different viewpoints, we use other depth cues to work out how far away things are and the relative positioning of things in the world. Now those other depth cues include color. As things get further away, they normally become bluer. So if you look at that distant mountain range, there's normally some blue haze between you and the mountain range, so they'll appear bluer than if they were closer to you. Another depth cue that's used, and this one is very important, is scale, and in particular, familiar size. When we see something and we know how big that object is, we can tell exactly how far away it is. For example, a car, we all know how big a car is, so when we look at a car and we see it and it's very small in our vision, we know that it must be a long way away. And when it's very big, we know that it must be very close. Now, other clues that we use are occlusion. Occlusion is where one object passes in front of another. So if I hold my hand up in front of the camera now, it's occluding me, it's blocking your view of me. So you know that my hand must be closer to the camera than my face, that's occlusion and we use this all the time. Um, perspective, this is another clue that we use. Uh, if you stand in the middle of a road, a straight road, and you look down that road, you'll see that road disappearing off to a point in the distance, that's perspective. Parallax is another one, and that's the relationship between different objects at different distances to each other. So if you look at a number of objects in the room that you're sitting in now perhaps, or if you hold your hand out in front of your face and you move your head from side to side, you'll see your hand move relative to all the other objects in the room. And that's parallax. Now another couple of clues that we use, or cues that we use that are very important, are uh, focus and accommodation. The process of our eyes focusing on an object is known as accommodation and up to about two and a half meters or so we can judge distance very accurately through focus. Beyond about two and a half meters it becomes much less accurate uh, and beyond sort of three or four meters it, it's very inaccurate so it only really works with close objects. Now the final one that we use is convergence. As we look at objects, particularly very close objects, say my finger like this, as I bring my finger closer to my eyes, you'll probably see me going cross-eyed. My eyes are converging, they are pointing in at the object that I'm looking at, and that's known as convergence. And convergence is something that we use a lot 
during stereoscopic productions and we'll look at that later and see how that interacts with the way the stereoscopic image appears on the screen that you're viewing. So I think you can see that our own human 3D vision of the world is very complex. We use all these multiple clues all the time without thinking about them to create this uh, depth map inside our heads that allows us to perceive distances and depth. Now trying to recreate that using video cameras and flat screens is actually very, very difficult. And one thing that we have to remember all the time is actually with a stereoscopic video production, what we're doing is creating an optical illusion. We're not creating a true 3D image. For example, right now, I'm being filmed with a camera and that camera is just seeing the front of my face. Now, if there were other people in this room, people on this side of the room, on my left, they would be seeing this side of the face. People on this side of the room over here, they would be seeing this side of my face. And if we were filming a true stereoscopic image, if somebody went into the cinema and they walked across the cinema from one side to the other, as they walked across the cinema, their view of my face would change. So as they walked across, they would see this side of my face, then the front of my face, and then this side of my face as they walked across. But that's not what happens, because even if you're using a pair of cameras on a 3D rig, basically both of those cameras are filming from one fixed viewpoint. So when the viewer goes to the cinema to watch it, because the viewer is seeing that same fixed viewpoint of the camera, even if the viewer was sat right over here on this side of the cinema, all they would see would be the front of my face, the same viewpoint as the camera. So I, it would look as though I was looking that way at the viewer sat on that side of the cinema. Similarly, if somebody was sat over here on this side of the cinema, they too would see my face looking at them over in that direction out of the screen because what everybody in the cinema sees is the viewpoint of the camera, like this camera here, that filmed them. So as they walk across the cinema, my face would appear to follow them and track them as they walk across the cinema. So we can see it's not really a three-dimensional image that we're creating. It is a stereoscopic image. It's two 2D images presented on a screen in such a way that it creates the illusion of depth. And it's very important to remember this is an optical illusion. Now, one of the issues with a stereoscopic production is because it is this optical illusion trying to mimic the real world, if it isn't done right, if it isn't done correctly, it really is unwatchable. And this is one of our biggest headaches. You know, if you make something in 2D and the focus is a little bit off, or maybe the white balance, the colors aren't quite right. Well, it doesn't look good. You know, it's not a good viewing experience perhaps for the viewer and it doesn't make you as the cameraman cinematographer look good, but it's watchable, it's viewable. It just doesn't look as nice as it should. But with a stereoscopic production, if the 3D is done badly, let's say the cameras are misaligned, this gives our brain a lot of extra work to do because it has to first realign those two images inside your head before you see the depth, before you actually see the 3D image. And that creates a lot of fatigue, a lot of tiredness when you give your brain a lot of extra work to do, maybe rotating or manipulating the images to line them up. It's going to make you tired and eventually it'll give you a headache and possibly even make you feel ill and nauseous. So it's really important that when you do a 3D production, it's done right because bad 3D is unwatchable.